today we're going to start off with, of course, the new Iris XE Max review from Igor's Lab. This will be very brief. I just want to bring it to everybody's attention so you're aware that it's out there. You can go dig through it and see what interesting, um, interesting details are there. From the gaming perspective, it doesn't look that great as you'll see. It's really a 720p card, which is an interesting release. Think along the lines of the RX 550. So here's the review. It was released, I believe, yesterday, day before, on March 9th, 2022. So it says, so the time has finally come. Today I can show you the detailed benchmarks with Gunnear Iris XE Max Index V2 Intel's DG1, which can offer a first taste of Intel's Arc Alchemist series, which is based on the newer DG2 GPU family. However, this is not yet on the market. CR freely available retail card of the of the DG1 has aroused my desires. After all, the DG1 GPUs are initially only available to software developers, but eventually found their way into discrete DIY desktop market later. Uh, the I Iris XE brand. So, think of it like we talk about the BMZ one for the Bitcoin ASIC and the BMZ two where the BMZ one wasn't really released to anybody. And the first generation that will be released to the public will be the BMZ two. It's kind of the same case here between the DG one and the DG two. Now, the testing obviously is going to be difficult as they discuss here because of drivers and other situations that are just going to cause it to basically not run every game that they tested, nor is it going to necessarily utilize the full potential of the GPU because of, well, that issue. But as you can see here for the, basically for the uh, specifications, what we have is on the DG1, the one that they tested, you have 96 execution units at a 1.65 gigahertz clock with four gigabytes of memory. And that's going to be the LP DDR4X that is going to be upgraded on DG2 to the GDDR6X. And that will have an effect on bandwidth. So for memory uh, on mining, which is what we care about, your memory bus is 128 bit. And that provides a total bandwidth of 60, 68 gigabytes per second. Whereas on DG2, we're going to be looking at 64 bit of GDDR6 uh, at the low end for 112 gigabytes per second. And then uh, we would have potentially, you know, a bigger model that we've talked about that would have the 128 bit bus. If we scroll down though, uh, he talks about the drivers, like I said, some of the driver issues and basically some crashes that went on and so on. And then he kind of gets into the features, the components, the cooler, and then the testing. And if we take a look at the testing here, um, as far as the performance goes, let's click through it. What you'll notice is that it's a little bit better than the RX 550 in most cases, right? So this is Borderlands 3. If we took a look at Horizon Zero Dawn, we're gonna see once again, pretty much on par with the RX 550. And keep in mind, this is the DG1 and this is at 720. Now there is a 1080p test that they ran in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That one's just a little bit better than the 550, 45 frames per second. If we go down, let's go ahead and look at the 1080p for Wolfenstein Youngblood, which would be Vulcan. And in Vulcan, it performs actually quite a bit better than uh, the, or uh, quite a bit worse, sorry. No, quite a bit better than the RX 550, excuse me. It's right here at the 37 frames and then the 18 on there. So. And Vulcan is performing a little bit better, probably because just the nature of the, the engine being more friendly uh, to, I guess, well, basically devices that don't have fully working drivers, pretty much. Um, but the big one for the miners, of course, is the power consumption. So the DG1 <clears throat> in form of the Gunnear Iris XE Max Index V2 consumes an average of just under 30 watts of electrical power via the single supplying PCIe slot. 
Though this value can fluctuate between 24 and 34 watts for the entire card, depending on game and resolution. If you exclude the frugal memory and include voltage converter and board losses, as well as other small uh, consumers, you could calculate a discount of about 10 watts. This would result in a value between 14 and 24 watts for the pure chip. Now, in comparison, of course, we would need to compare that to the RX 550. I thought I had the tab pulled up, but I do not. Uh, but let's go ahead and do that. We should be able to pull that up here. Uh, and so on the five on the five RX 550, uh, the rating is 50 watts and the consumption is at 47 watts. So in comparison, of course, you're talking about you know more power for like you know a 50 percent reduction or more processing power for a 50 percent reduction in power or whatever. So you're 30 watts versus the 47. It's really good as far as power consumption goes, especially for a DG1. So it makes me really excited to see what the second generation is going to provide. These things could be beasts. Obviously, we have the issue of the four gigabytes on these particular models, the, the lower end models that are going to restrict it from mining essentially um, Ethereum itself. However, there are possibilities for other algorithms there, including, of course, Ethereum Classic, even if you want to stay on ET hash or something like Flux or Ravencoin, so on. And the power consumption is looking really, really good. So I'm excited to see what the larger cards with the more with more memory actually are going to get here. The ones with the bigger 128-bit bus on something like, of course, the GDDR6, hopefully the newer GDDR6, and we get this same low power consumption because most of that power consumption typically comes from the core side of things and we will see a mining beast in the making because i believe what we were talking about previously is those bigger cards are going to be still like sub 75 watts and we could be seeing like something like 30 mega hash a second for basically i would say probably between 40 to 50 watts it's going to be definitely lower than like the rx 6600 for example from what we can tell and it's exciting stuff. So if you guys want to see the full review, definitely check out the description because we focus on it from the mining perspective. What we are worried about, of course, is going to be that memory. And that's what we cover here. So I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern time. You can check out more clips here or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.